Hey everybody, my name is Mike. I am not for Coltrane. Thank you so much for joining uh, joining us, joining joining me, joining everyone who is here watching with us for this, the uh, the Coltrane Tuesdays show on this, the, uh, the, the 22nd day of March in the year 2022. It is the penultimate show, the second to last show of the uh, of this season. This is the 51st consecutive Tuesday afternoon. I've been doing this from here in my attic stairwell, and, uh, and clearly I'm about ready for a bit of a break. Um, but before we do that, before before we take a break, first off, I should say thanks to everyone who was watching. Thanks, uh, if, if you can confirm that the, uh, hey, thank you, Margo, you anticipated the question I was just about to ask, which is, can people actually see and hear me? So thank you, Margo. I am very, very grateful for that. We're going to do a special request song. We're going to talk a little bit about some fun things that are coming up uh, in the next couple of weeks. And of course, we're going to play the Not For Coltrane Stump the Band game. For those who might be unfamiliar, or if you're watching this on the replay, and you're like, hey, my friend sent me this link. I don't know what this guy's doing. It looks like a closet. I don't know what's going on. Um, the Not For Coltrane Stump the Band game works like this. People who are live online with us will give me a song suggestion, a song request, and I will have to respond to it regardless of whether I know the song. So uh, maybe maybe I will happen to know the song, in which case I will go ahead and play it. Uh, maybe, maybe I will have heard the song before. Maybe I'll be somewhat familiar with the song, but I will have never attempted to actually play it before, in which case I will attempt to figure out how to play it here in front of you. Uh, perhaps I will not recognize the title of the requested song at all in which case I will have to make up a brand new song right here on the spot with the same name as the song that was requested, thereby technically satisfying the requirement. That is how we play the Not For Coltrane Stump the Band game, and uh, that's what we'll be doing in just a few minutes. So I'm grateful. Oh, wow, we've already got all sorts of people. Hey, Tom Cooney's here. We've, we've, got, uh, we've got all sorts of people hanging out. So uh, we've got Beth, we've got Margo, as I mentioned, we've got Stephen. <laughs> everyone's, everyone's like, yes, yes, shut up and get on the show. We can see you and hear you. Fine, go on. Um, Tom Cooney, I'm very, very grateful for Tom to, for stopping by. Tom also has a webcast, and so remind me to talk about that in just a couple minutes, Tom. And uh, let's see. All right, so hey, we've got oh, people. I love that people in the comments are saying hi to each other. That's even better. So, all right. Uh, so yes, thanks very much to all of you who are watching live with us right now. Uh, thanks to everyone who is watching this in the future. If you're watching this on the replay, hello from the past. Uh, thanks to the people who've already been hitting the like button, which I'm very, very grateful for. Many of you are subscribers already, which is really cool. There's a little bell icon uh, that will give you notification next week when I do the final uh, season closing show uh, for, for this time around. And... Um, yeah, thank you. Oh, yes, and if, if, if you're on your lunch break and you think that other people would enjoy this kind of content and watching along with you, there's a little share button that will give, give you a link that you can send that out into the, into the ether so other people can join in and watch, because it is more fun when there are more people here. If I'm talking faster than usual, it's because I'm particularly nervous about the, uh, the song that I am doing today. Uh, so as I mentioned very, very briefly over on Facebook a moment ago, I had planned to do uh, a song, to lead off today's show with a song that I already knew. I said, oh, okay, you know what? It, it's it's the end of the season. I haven't had time to rehearse anything. So last night I'm like, hey, you know what? I'll just do, I have a, a bossa nova version of Margaritaville. That's great. It'll work for a genre event. It'll be fine. And then I look back at the archives and I saw that I did that last spring. <laughs> so I'm like, well, crud. I've got to do something else. Uh, so I recalled... I recalled that uh, that Beth, who has become a very, very like regular uh, friend and promoter of the program here, as well as someone who is very important to me, uh, had requested a little song called I Love You, I Love You, It's Disgusting uh, by a band called Broadside. So I said, I'm going to figure out how to play that. It is definitely a ukulele song. And then there's also this little uh, this little um, solo in it. Um, how am I going to do that? Well, seems like a kazoo kind of day. Uh, there are plenty of things that are that are challenging about this song. Um, there's a little little part that has a nifty on the pre-chorusy bit. Uh, watch for that and see how I screw it up in, in fun and innovative ways. Uh, it's also at sort of at the the higher end of my range. 
Um, so my voice will probably be pretty shredded by the end. So we'll see how this goes. As uh, you know, at this point, I don't even really need to put a disclaimer on like, oh, I should have spent more time practicing because I always, always should have spent more time practicing. I definitely follow the uh, the algorithm uh, as usual, which is to figure out the, the amount of time I actually will spend practicing. I start with the amount of time I should spend practicing, divide that by half, and then round down to the nearest half hour. And that is how much time I actually will spend practicing. And that is that's approximately correct for uh, for what we have this time around. So, all right. <laughs> Beth has been begging me to learn this song for three months. Yes, this is true. And uh, actually, I I thought that from the uh, from the thumbnail that Beth would have already guessed that this the this week was I love you, I love you. It's disgusting. So, if you're watching this in the future and I've replaced the thumbnail, uh, maybe I'll have a link to it or something. Anyway. So, yeah, song uh, by the band Broadside, I Love You, I Love You, It's Disgusting. Let's see how this goes. I wrote to you within a melody. If you decide to sing, would you sing it back to me? Sing it right for those crooked teeth. You rescued me when my mind was in a prison. You set me free when no one else would listen. stick the landing there but uh, the first verse first verse went pretty well so there you go that song is I love you I love you it's disgusting hey Matt's watching that's very cool hi Matt awesome didn't expect to see you here that's very cool um, so yeah we've got uh, what can I tell you about that particular song I love you I love you it's disgusting I uh, <laughs> silently singing along <laughs> very cool ah Beth is grateful for the attempt. I'm not crying, you're crying. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I'm glad that was uh, that was uh, successful in at least 
at least in some measure. Uh, so I was unfamiliar with the band Broadside. Um, possibly given my age, that is, is not uh, terribly surprising. Broadside is a pop punk band. I believe they originated in uh, Virginia, uh, somewhere in Virginia. Uh, my understanding, based on Wikipedia, is that as of 2017, none of the original members of the band were still in it. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so Ollie Baxter, uh, B-A-X-T-E-R, is the lead singer and also ukulele player. He's been a member of the band since 2013. Uh, this particular song, I Love You, I Love You, is Disgusting, is the final track on their second album, uh, Paradise, I believe, which came out in 2017. Um, they are, I, I don't remember if I said this, they are a pop punk band, so most of their songs are a lot louder than, than this one. Uh, they sort of went a different, different direction than this one. Um, and I found a, a note online, which is apparently, uh, what Ollie Baxter wrote in the album Commentary, and I think it pretty well sums up the, the gist of the song. He says, quote, It's a song that, you know, I wrote about my girlfriend. And it's just straight up like, anybody can take it, anybody's going to get it, anybody that's in love, anyone that's ever loved waking up to a person, anybody that's ever loved the smell of another person, anyone that's ever cried over or after a breakup because they left their t-shirt on the floor. People are going to vibe that because it's just one of those songs that puts you in the feels, you know? If you're in love right now, if you're lucky enough to be in love right now, you're really going to embrace it and you're going to say, I get this, it's a, I get this corny ass ukulele song. Uh, if you're not in love right now, you're going to say, whack, lame, must be nice. So we just wanted to write a love song, and I think there's really nothing wrong with that. Indeed, there really is nothing wrong with that. So there you go. That is uh, the perspective of Ollie Baxter of the band Broadside, B-A-X-X-T-E-R. <laughs> says, yeah, yes, uh, says the guy who calls himself not for Coltrane, who has zero reason to mock anybody else about their names. Um, yeah. So go check out uh, go check out Broadside. I will post some uh, some links in the description once I'm done here. I'll also include a link to the music video for that song, uh, which starts out with Ollie Baxter uh, playing ukulele and and sort of wandering around, uh, and I was getting totally nailed by a wave um, on the beach, presumably out in in California, uh, and then includes. Uh, I believe uh, him with his actual real life girlfriend, and then various other members of the bands with their significant others. I think um, so. It's you know kind of sweet and adorable if you're if you're into that kind of thing, and I hope you are, um, because that is apparently where things are going today. So thanks very much to Beth for that special, uh, really nailed the inflection on the song description. Uh, all right. Oh, okay. So we've got, we have, we have a song request. Oh, Matt very graciously was, was saying kind things about it. Very nice. Um, cool. And we do have a song request for the Not For Culture and Something Band, which I don't know. So we're going to see how that goes. But first, before I get to that, let me mention a few other things that are happening soon that I definitely should make sure that we talk about. One of them is a big project I do every year called Come Together. It is a benefit for an initiative called, wait, wait, here, I knew it was here on the floor somewhere, called No Place for Hate. No Place for Hate is an initiative of the Anti-Defamation League. No Place for Hate. No Place for Hate is an initiative of the Anti-Defamation League. It is in schools all over the place, thousands and thousands of schools. Um, and it's a framework for helping the schools come up with their own plans about how to foster uh, inclusion and solidarity among the students and acceptance. Um, and this idea that there's a place for every single kind of person in, you know, regardless of your, your, the way your mind works, your, where your family came from recently or generations ago, what kind of language you speak, you know, any, any, whatever, any, whatever it is. Um, and, um, what I like to do with this, with this come together project is to take that same idea first off to let people know about this program, raise awareness about it and raise funding for it and also to bring that same message out into the community. So this year, this year we're going, we're going kind of big uh, because, uh, so in previous, the past couple years, we did this as a webcast because, you know, COVID. Prior to that, it had been an in-person show like Godfrey Daniels. This year, it is both a webcast and an in-person show in conjunction with Godfrey Daniels at the uh, Charles A. Brown Ice House here in Bethlehem. Uh, so all sorts of fun things with, with that. The webcast is coming up on the afternoon of April 10th, and then the in-person show is going to be on the evening of Friday, April 29th. If you are unable to actually be there in person and you still like to contribute, that is okay. 
there are ways that you can still do that and still enjoy the show aspects of it. Where I'm, I'm going to announce more details, including the lineup of performers who are going to be there in person on April 29th. I'm going to say Thursday. Thursday. Follow me on the socials and you'll see information going out Thursday about who exactly is going to be at the show on the 29th over at the Ice House. I'm very, very excited about this. You can also go to GoFundMe.com slash ComeTogether2022. Um, or, like I say, follow me on the socials. I'll have information down in the description afterwards. Um, Tom Cooney, who is with us right now, has been part of the webcast for the past couple of years. And, Tom, I'm going to go ahead and ask you right now. If you'd like to be part of the webcast on the 10th, you totally can be. So, please, hook it, hook it up. And we'll, get, we'll get things worked out so that Tom Cooney can be part of the webcast again this year. So, I'm very grateful for Tom for helping out for this project. Which would be a great segue for mentioning that Tom also has his webcast on Tuesdays. It's called Three Songs for Prometheus, or Three Plus Songs for Prometheus, over at Tom Cooney's uh, YouTube channel. Uh, it, is, it is music, it is good vibes, uh, it is fun things like that. So go check out Tom's webcast, Tom, and also if you have any in-person appearances, by all means drop those down in the chat. So, thank you, my friend. Uh, what else can I say? Uh... <laughs> Margot loves it when I don't know the song at all, uh, and Beth doesn't know it at all either. So, great. Well, that means maybe less judgment? We'll find out. But before we get to the Not For Coltrane Stump the Band game, the other thing that I need to mention is that uh, we're coming up on this final show, this final show of this Season 3 of the Coltrane Tuesdays show. Um... And uh, I, so last year, last year I ended off the season with uh, with with just music from the show Hamilton, or at least inspired by the show Hamilton. Um, and uh, and so the idea was we played the Not for Coltrane Stump the Band game, but only the peop the only songs that could be requested were from Hamilton. And of course, I could not learn the entire musical uh, in the space that I had. Uh, but so I learned several songs and, and had, was sort of prepared to go for some of the, the big hits, but I was going to see what else would come up and might surprise me. Not doing Hamilton again this year. Got to do something different, something interesting. I've been talking here on the, on the program uh, about what else can we do, maybe some, some other sort of theme. Uh, it, it had been discussed possibly doing uh, uh, Disney th songs. Disney songs. That's something else. Uh, Disney songs for this for this final show, like, oh, that'll be fun, and then like, oh, wait, right. Um, not interested in getting copyright strikes on the YouTube channel here. So we're not we're not doing Disney songs, so don't don't request Disney songs because because yeah. Um, uh, so instead, we've kicked around several other ideas of what the other themes might be, and and I'm I have been I've been sort of. Uh, a little bit up in the air, kind of leaning towards this, but now I'm actually going to make it official by telling it to all of you that the theme for the final show of the third Coltrane Tuesday season is going to be road songs. Songs about cars, uh, the, you know, cars being on the road, about driving, about traveling, those sorts of things. It's going to be all, it's going to be the, the road show version of Not For Coltrane in that it is literally songs about roads. That was... That sounded cleverer, more clever in my head before I actually said it out loud. So tune in for that. Uh, pull up, pull up whatever whatever songs that you think of that you want to hear about about driving and roads and that sort of thing, uh, and uh, and we'll see how many of them I have prepared, and we'll see we'll see what I get surprised by in the moment and have to figure out on the fly, much like I'm going to have to do today. So. Margot loves road songs. She's already got one to request. That's excellent. Well, if you want me to spend time rehearsing it, you're welcome to mention it now. Uh, I'd, if you want to have any possibility, or I'll increase the likelihood that I will spend some time rehearsing it, you're welcome to mention it now. It is also totally fine to play the game by seeing if I happen to have, uh, you know, see if you could stump me with it on, uh, on Tuesday of next week. So, yay, that'll be fun. But for right now... <laughs> Zena too. Every road has its thorns. Womp womp. Um, right, so there has been a request for the Not For Coltrane Stump the Band game, which means that's what we need to move into right now. Uh, so in case you missed the top of the show, a bit of a recap. The way things work for the Not For Coltrane Stump the Band game, people give me song suggestions, song requests, and I have to play them. 
regardless of whether I know the song. So someone might uh, request a song that I do happen to know, uh, which case I will go ahead and play it. Uh, it will be unrehearsed. I may not have played it for upwards of six, nine, twelve months, uh, but I will at least have some familiarity with the song and how it's supposed to go. Uh, the requested song might be one that I sort of know, like I've heard it on people's playlists, or I used to listen to it on the radio, or I've heard it recently on the radio, or I've seen a bunch of people do it at open mics, uh, in which case I will attempt to figure out how to play it here in front of everyone. If the requested song is one that I do not know at all, or at least I don't recognize the title at all, uh, I will have to make up a brand new song right here on the spot with the same name as the song that was requested, thereby technically satisfying the requirement. That is how we play the Not For Coltrane Stump the Band game. And the request, the request this time is, let's see, <laughs> Stephen says, oh, now I get it. The Xanadu wasn't a, uh, wasn't a road song request. That was the, the, all of the music from the musical Xanadu. Maybe next year, maybe next year. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Let's see how that goes. Oh, America by Paul Simon. That's a really good one. Hi, Esme. Thanks for stopping by. All right. But for today, for today, the Not For Coltrane Stump the Band request is for, uh, where was it? Stephen had it here a minute ago. Waiting for Superman by the band Iron and Wine. I have heard of the band Iron and Wine. I'm sure I've even heard some of their songs. Uh, I do not, I'm not familiar enough with their oeuvre to be able to say uh, this, this, is how, uh, this is how they sound. Um, yeah, but I'm, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking there's acoustic guitar because, you know, uh, because there is. Um, <laughs> waiting for Superman. Uh, the other thought I had was waiting for Godot, which is something else entirely. Although I like the idea that, you know, like Superman doesn't actually show up in the song, which would have it something in common with, with Waiting for Godot. Um, let's see. Waiting for Superman. Now, and we there was some the wheels on the bus. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. I will have to have that ready for next week. Um, <laughs> now, now the problem is I'm going to have wheels on the bus in my head when I'm trying to come up with a, with a song uh, that should sound sort of like Iron and Wine. Um, okay, Iron and Wine waiting for Superman. Iron and Wine waiting for Superman. What am I going to do? Uh, I feel like this should have kind of a kind of a dark feel to it. Um, you know, come to think of it, I haven't I haven't actually tuned this guitar today. I should probably should probably do that if there's a tuner somewhere in the building. <laughs> waiting for Godot is like watching paint dry. Yes, that is uh, that is very much the point. Beth also says, did the cover of Such Great Heights that they used on the Eminem commercial 15 years ago. <laughs> um, I appreciate the specificity of that reference. That's, that's, that's something. All right, so drop D. Probably some tune in front of their audience. They probably have people to do that. Man, that's a. Whenever I've seen a seen a show and there's someone with it who actually has a guitar tech, it's like, man, that's that's when you know you've made it. There's someone else to tune your guitars for you and just bring your fresh one in between songs.
double drop D. All right. figure out what other oh hey that'll be it I wanted to put this in a minor key but I'm I'm blanking, blanking on the other chords I would need let's see can I do the math in my head can an untrained folk musician figure out figure out the chords So that would probably be... Sounds cool. Um, I feel like there's there's another. All right, we'll call that we'll call that good enough. Uh, I've got four chords to work with. Um, five chords to work with. Uh, waiting for Superman. <laughs> Beth is going to continue imagining wheels on the bus over these chords. Don't tempt me. All right, waiting for Superman. Waiting for Superman. So presumably the song is about uh, how we need to, um, you know, with the, the frustration of, of waiting for someone else to, to come in and, and solve our problems, uh, maybe individually, maybe at a societal level. Um, Ooh, man, it would be fascinating to do a song called Waiting for Superman from the perspective of Superman. About that pressure of like, oh man, everyone's counting on me, everyone's counting on me, I can't, I can't let them down, but I can't possibly help everybody. Hmm. I like that idea. song there that I'm also thinking of, which is uh, not what I'm going to play. Um, 
initial line. I need a first line, uh, so a song from the perspective of Superman called Waiting for Superman. Um, where does the song start? Okay. actually have a first line but I'm going to come with a rhyme for that first line before I start because otherwise it's going to be a really crummy start to the song um, okay maybe this is about the guy with the guiding lights like at the airport helping Superman land on the top of the tall building we're in the middle of a dark, haunted forest. I like, I like the way your mind works, Fargo. I think, I think Superman has supervision, so he's supposed to be able to do that. But I think it's accurate that even Superman needs some help sometimes, which, which I think is probably the premise of the song. So we're gonna see how this goes. Things I feel every time 
was um, something that approximated a song. So thanks very much to... <laughs> this isn't a song on the next EP I'm boycotting. Well, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I, I do... As I, well, I've been doing this for long enough 
that sometimes I'll try to throw in a little something extra like the alternate tuning. Uh, if I'm actually able to work in some kind of internal rhyme, um, that's when I know I'm having a particularly good day. I think I think I might have even gotten some rhyming triplets in there. Um, so, ooh. Um, so anyway, thanks very much to, uh, let's see, uh, this song is, the uh, oh, Cataracts. Oh, that's good. Uh, <laughs> Beth says the song is giving her chills. Uh, also figured out why it's called Stump the Band Game, because if you stump the band, you win a new song. <laughs> well, win might be, uh, might be a strong way of putting it some weeks, but thank you very much for that, Beth. I uh, love how the form of the song feels like a holding pattern. <laughs> yup. Yep, that is that is absolutely that is absolutely what's happening. Best ever. So thanks very much to Stephen for that request for Waiting for Superman by Iron and Wine, which is not the song that I just played. Uh, but you know, but now now it exists uh, for at least some indeterminate period of time on the internet internet, so you can hear what I came up with today. Maybe on the new EP. Someday, under some circumstance. I don't know. We'll find out. Um, so thanks very much to the kind words from Beth and Margot. Thanks to everyone who has been watching. Everyone who's been hitting that like button. I'm, I'm grateful, always grateful to see that number go up a little bit. Um, and yeah, then the thanks again to Stephen for that request. Look for information about, uh, about Come Together 2022, uh, the in-person show coming up at the Ice House on the 29th of April, as well as the webcast on the 10th of April, and announcements coming out this Thursday, gofundme.com slash cometogether2022, as well as all of the Not For Coltrane social medias and whatnot. Uh, tune in on Tuesday of next week for the final show of this season three of the Not For Coltrane, tu of, <laughs> of the Coltrane Tuesday show with the Not For Coltrane Sump The Band Game with a special edition of the Not For Coltrane Sump The Band Game featuring road songs, uh, and apparently Wheels on the Bus, and lots of other great songs that were suggested as part of the chat this time around. So I will definitely need to be going back and looking at all of those. And, um, and of course, thanks also to Beth, because uh, Beth does a tremendous job of letting people know about this particular webcast, uh, and also for the request for I Love You, I Love You, It's Disgusting. So there you go, and that, uh, I think that about does it. That's about, that's about enough. So, my name is Mike. I am not for Coltrane. Please take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and I will see you right here one more time in Season 3, right here next week. See you then.